Brent, answer the question. Did this strike the right tone for the equity markets up 1% in a bond market that is rallying two to three basis points uh, down on the day? I think so. And I think if you pull it back and take a look at it, I mean, to me, there were some changes around the edges. But overall, the message to me is still very much measured and patient with erring on the side of too much, not too little. And so if you think about it, we're still talking about three potential rate hikes per year. And in 2024, the end rate, the end uh, rate is supposed to be 1.75 percent. That's well below their long term uh, neutral rate of 2.5, which means the economic cycle, they believe, will still be going then. Uh, and so to me, I, I think it was a balanced press conference. I think the market was worried about hawkishness because of all this talk about inflation that is dominating the headlines these days. Uh, but all in all, I think the Fed is still who we thought they were, and they are still going to err on the side of doing too much. And that is still market friendly in, in today's environment. Market friendly. But who are the outperformers and who are going to be the losers? How much can we still bet on a reopening cyclical trade that seems to run out of steam when we worry about the Delta variant? Well, I mean, I think you've had a myriad of worries the past few months, and I think they've all kind of bled into the market, and they initially caused more people to go defensive. But over the past few days, we've seen a little bit more of a selling off. And so if you think about those worries that we've discussed before, all those really started in mid-May. So you have the too much camp that's worried about inflation and what will the Fed do? We kind of had that question answered today. You have the too little camp. That includes China and COVID. And so right now, everyone's looking to see if COVID cases roll over. This week, you had China come back in the news because those debt payments from Evergrande were due. And then you have the fiscal uh, policy camp that is worried about what's going to happen there. You yeah. have the continuing resolution. You have the debt reconciliation. That's coming to head. I do think as this all pulls back, as the market gets more certainty about what is actually going to occur, you are still going to see strong economic growth. The consumer is in fantastic shape. Corporations are in good shape. And I still think that means that you have one last gasp potentially in that cyclical trade and that value trade, which quite frankly, if you look at small caps, they're as cheap as they have been versus yeah. large caps since 1999. Yeah, and uh, obviously that's playing out, at least on a daily basis here, of course, with the Russell uh, 2000 uh, outperforming, Brent. Of course, a lot of people seeing maybe a potential reignitement of that cyclical trade. I guess the question here, Brent, is when does that fire actually start to burn out? Do we start to see that burn out once we get six, ten months out when that taper maybe potentially is at towards the end and a lot of people start thinking about rate hikes? Yeah, and, and so I do think it does start burning out or fizzling just a bit. And I, I think the strong part of that trade is probably done. I mean, we saw a re really strong uh, trade from, I believe, around August till um, May of this year. That was incredibly strong. That made up a lot of the ground. But there is still more to go. And I think it's been this... Uh, you want to own growth and defensive versus you want to own small cap or cyclicals. I think it's more of a balanced future as we get past this next, I think, bout of what I think small caps will outperform. I think you get more towards a balanced trade. And then typically, large cap and defensive doesn't do all that well relatively until you start worrying about the end of the cycle. And we're not there yet. We're not there yet in terms of the end of the cycle. But what are we worrying about as to, well, when we might indeed see oil, energy, commodities feed into this, Brent? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest question and the biggest risk that I think is out there is still inflation. And that's why I think people should try to hedge against it. And I think you hedge against it because the Fed's not going to quell it until they actually have to. And so in the past, if you were an investor, if you thought inflation was going to rise, you bought longer term treasuries, you prepared more defensively. I think the Fed is showing you that they're willing to wait uh, until they actually have enough evidence that it's here and it's staying. And so that to me is still the biggest risk. I, I'm not suggesting there isn't a risk of a downside, but if you think about what has happened with the policymakers around the globe, they are trying to cover the downside risk. They're always and everywhere willing to do more. They will do that until there's a cost on their side. That cost has to be an interest rate spike, a dollar fall, or an inflation rise. And we're not there yet. Brian, can you tell us if the taper tantrum is behind us this time around, given how well choreographed it seems to be this time? Yeah, that was a that's a good question. And I don't know if I have the perfect answer. I think it is right now, as long as the inflation data shows that it comes back within. If it doesn't, then I think we have maybe we don't call it a taper tantrum. I don't know what we call it. Maybe mm -hmm. it gets a new name in the, in the cycle. But I do think that's what people are waiting for. That's the one that's still outstanding. Right now, it seems to me as if they're one time price hikes. Um, we'll see. I mean, I well, think uh, a prior guest on your show brought up uh, wages and, and the labor market. Will people come back? 
that's a big question that weighs into that inflation commentary. All right. I mean, you just want to go back, though, I mean, with regards to the taper tantrum and your previous response, Brent, I mean, you made a great point here about how the Fed may react or at least how it will try to react to sort of keep a floor under things here. I guess, do we ever get to a point where the market does really try to test the Fed and throw that proverbial tantrum here? If that does happen here, what's the Fed's option? Good question. I mean, I mean, to me, uh, maybe they have to tighten at some point. That's the, the one thing that I think is maybe different in this cycle. I mean, I think I don't think we've had a 50 basis point increase in the federal funds rate since 2000 or something like that. Yeah. So it's been more patient and deliberate. Um, this cycle to me could end a lot. I still think it has room to run. I think there's still a productivity story that has to play out that keeps inflation at bay for a while after we get past this transitory inflation. Yeah. Uh, but the Federal Reserve used to try to moderate the business cycle mm -hmm. that stretched it out. Now they're saying we're going to wait until the end and be more reactive. That could mean a more damaging end of the cycle, mm. um, and it could happen more abruptly. But I still think that's a 2024 story, yeah. not a 2021, 2022 story. Still time to buy them, Brent Sheeting.